Good evening, friends. This is Rahul Magan here as a group chief executive officer, treasury consulting, and also a venture capitalist. As we speak, treasury consulting is a multinational headquartered group based out Singapore. We are a multi-asset and multinational hedge fund. By multi-asset, I mean we actively take positions in multiple asset classes like gold, silver, platinum, palladium, agriculture commodities, base metal, and foreign exchange equities. By multinational, we actively cover our position at multiple locations like United States, Europe and Asia Pacific region. Very soon we would be entering Dubai also. But it will take some time because we are waiting for you know a lot of things. Let them materialize and then we will enter. Definitely we'll enter. Like I repeated many times, and I continue to repeat all the times that we are a proprietary hedge fund. By proprietary, I mean no third party. I repeat, no third party can invest capital in our fund. Basically, Treasury Consulting and none of the subsidiaries of Treasury Consulting invite any form of funding by any third party. Please do take a note of that. I promised people around a month ago that I would be entering MENA. MENA is not a name of a girl. MENA is Middle East Capital Markets. Time is definitely a constraint. It took me around a month to reach to MENA. But now we are starting our videos covering the MENA financial market, which is Middle East financial market. In this Middle East financial market, we would be covering each and everything, but of course, it would be taking some time. So please do not expect that everything would happen overnight. Please don't expect that. Today, I would be covering one of the most vibrant and well known brand in the world of banking. Although I also interacted with them, but that interaction not uh you know it's a very bare instruction uh, interaction with them and the name is emirates nbd one of the best banks in the middle east you know that i worked as a corporate treasurer for american companies and uh, i worked in treasury function for almost nine and a half years and majority of my time, you know, EY was the auditor, the statutory auditor of us. And you know that there is barely any scandal which is left by EY, barely. In fact, it is a matter of research for University of Harvard that select one scandal which EY not did. And I think it would be difficult for Harvard also to make this happen, to be honest. Today, I downloaded the annual report of NBD, Emirates NBD, the latest 2021, because 2022 annual report would, take, would definitely take some time. And I got something, you know, very strange in their annual report. But before I comment that, let me confirm you that during my around nine and a half years of work as a corporate treasurer, I thoroughly dealt in hedge accounting, which includes hedge accounting as per US GAAP. And today also on time to time basis, I make videos covering hedge accounting as per IFRS. I visited the annual report, the financial statement piece of, you know, NBD. And the first thing that hits me is that Deloitte is their auditor. Congratulations. Deloitte is their auditors. I don't think I need to explain the credentials of Deloitte also. 
because Deloitte credentials are also as superior as we have EY credentials, not only in India, but worldwide. And if Deloitte will feel Deloitte feel offend because of this statement, then Deloitte can definitely contact me in that regards. To me, it hardly matters. On time to time basis, I am talking with Deloitte and I already wrote an email to, to, to the Deloitte's global CEO, but I doubt he will reply. But now he will reply. Guys, remember that banks draw their income from two sources. Number one is the NII, which is called net interest income. It, it means that you have the money from depositors. You lend this money to corporates, probably other banks, interbank funding and all these, and you make money out of it. The difference between the money you lend and the difference between you borrowed is called NII, which is called net interest income. This is the major source of Income by banks, as per books, theory, MBA institution, you can say. Unfortunately, in the last several years, I noticed that on time to time basis, the banks also entering into other form of income, which is called their own private equity funds, who are investing in startups and playing the valuation valuation game. We will cover this later. And also trading of derivative instrument. Please take a note of that. Trading of derivative instrument. I am not using a word hedging of derivative instrument. There is a big difference in that. Please take a note of that. Please. If you, first of all, you need to understand that when you trade the derivative, you trade with a thought of profits. So example, let me give you a very simplistic example. GBP and yen are the most volatile foreign exchange players, uh, pairs we have in the world. Although we have Canadian dollar also, we have Swiss franc also, we have Euro also, they are as volatile as GBP and yen. But when it comes to trading of derivatives, then GBP and yen are the most volatile, I can say. So, you know, generally the top banks, without quoting any specific name, their prop desk, what they do, they take a LTFX position in GBP and yen. If they see that the 10 year forward curve is 13, you know, I would say 13 big figures, they buy that. If they see uh, once this 13 big figures turn out to be 13.5 big figures, they sell that. Once they see, you know, this 13 big figures become 12 and a half, they sell that. This is how it works. And this is how it would continue to work. Let it be honest. And there is nothing wrong in that. They do are trading where they make a lot of money out of it. But there is a problem also in trading. The problem is that trading is subject to losses also. We have seen very recently that people, the crypto hedge funds, those who exorbitantly, exorbitantly invested in crypto assets, they lost heavily. They lost heavily. Henceforth, trading is subject to profit and losses. But when a regulated entity, just like Emirates NBD, is doing this, it is subject to scrutiny. It's not about NBD, even if of course, as the time would progress, we cover JP Morgan, we cover Goldman Sachs, we cover different banks. In NBD Annual Report 2021, I repeat, NBD Annual Report 2021, page number 68, I repeat, or I should say paragraph number 35, titled Derivatives. You know, guys, they have derivatives in four categories and that really surprising me i'm telling you that really surprising me number one derivative held for trading good number two derivative held as cash flow hedges number three 
fair value hedges. Thankfully, they are not using balance sheet hedges. I have seen n number of people who are using who are using uh, balance sheet hedging. But anyways, and number four, net investment hedges. So they have derivative in four categories. Number one, held for trading, cash flow, fair value, and net investment. Actually, the word which they use held for trading is actually not held for trading. It is freestanding hedges. That's very important. Let me first speak what the hell is freestanding hedges before I continue. The freestanding hedges is hedges whereby the company or a bank or a corporate or a private equity or a hedge fund is very clearly that if the profit comes huge, exorbitant, huge that would come in the books of that entity directly into pnl not in equities which can easily swing eps remember which can easily swing eps whether it is basic eps or diluted eps easily and suppose it ends up as a big loss it will once again come in the pnl it's a double-edged sword. Simple. It's a double-edged sword. And you can't run away from this. That's the uh, very important thing which you need to learn, actually. What really surprises me here is that NBD as of financial year 21 having 816 Billion. Congratulations. 816 billion worth of derivative instrument. I am saying AED. Remember, I am saying AED. All the figures I am quoting is in AED. Do take a note of that, please. I went to the annual report and I checked the size of the balance sheet of NBD, which is called the sum of either assets or, you know, the sum of the liabilities, whatever you say. Either way, it has to be same. In 2020, the balance sheet size was 698.08 billion. Please, rem please repeat, whatever number I am quoting is in AED, AED. So in 2020, it is 698.08 billion. In 2021, it is 687.43 billion. It is 687.43 billion. It means the balance sheet has shrunk. Anyways, that is not the scope of discussion now, probably later. If I take 2021, Total derivatives, which is sum of trading, cash flow, fair value, net investment, it is 816.773. Do you know that this is 17% more than the balance sheet size? It means total derivatives position taken in 2020. 21 as compared with 2020 balance sheet it is 117 percent congratulations highly congratulations and in 2021 since the balance sheet has shrunk a bit it is 119 percent 119 percent and do you know that derivatives trading held for trading is 92.7%, 92.7% of the derivatives, which means the derivative book which is held for trading is 92.7% of the total book. 
Now I would like the question from Deloitte. The most honest regular auditor of the globe after EY because they are the most honest auditors as we speak. Which law of IFRS, because they conclude their books in IFRS as far as the information is concerned on the internet, which law of IFRS is saying that the derivative book, primarily a trading book, that would be a better word, can be 100% rather more than the whole balance sheet. This is called Deloitte and this is called NBD. As we speak on 10th November 2022, NBD share price is around 13.8 AED. 13.8 AED. It is actually, it's actually a range bound, if you say. Range bound in the sense like if you take the last two years, you know, then the maximum it went around 16, kind you can say 16 near to. And the minimum it went is around around 10 and a half, you can say. It's so, so in the last two years, the range is 10 and a half to 16. It's a very range bound kind of thing, you know. This is what our first and foremost video covering the MENA market, which is the Middle East market. I would like to let all banks, financial institutions, hedge fund, pension funds knew very clearly that Treasury Consulting is now covering the MENA market. And I would let you know, and you are completely aware that what are our credentials, our strength, and our knowledge, which speaks himself. And this question to Deloitte is open. This is Rahul Magan from Treasury Consulting Group. You knew my personal number, plus 91-9899-242-978. I repeat, plus 91-9899-242-978. If in case you need more information, you can visit our fixed income platform, www.fixedincome.global. I repeat, www.fixedincome.global. Thank you guys and have a great time ahead.